Thank you so much for everybody who's turned up. Uh, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you guys. I must say from the opening that this was Sarah Gochala's idea to take you away from your morning activities this morning. It was her idea to start. In fact, she wanted to start at 7. I said, no, 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 no. People like Patricia might complain. Let us start at 7.30. So if you need to blame anybody, please blame Sarah Gochalia. Now that that is out of the way, I want us to talk about how we are going to be able to not just thrive, but to make sure that we go back to where we were before this little inconvenience of the COVID came along. So the reason why uh, we need to continuously um, look at uh, how to go to the next level is because unless we do that, we're obviously going to be out of business. Now, I am, uh, first of all, very proud that uh, this particular team has held together and you guys are doing what you have to do. I must say that your leadership team is holding on pretty well. Kudos to everybody. Well done. And uh, Pasi and everybody else in terms of the communication, you guys are doing a great job. Now, for my... Uh, for not my, but for the hub team, hey, we need, we need to get back to where we need to be in terms of uh, getting the team uh, back on fire. Okay? So uh, this morning when I was uh, preparing to come and speak to you, I thought, okay, as usual, I can go and uh, speak to, to the team about uh, business. But as you know, from the time that we interacted for over, what, six months or so, it is not always just about the business. It's about the human beings. It's about the people, all right? And the most important thing for us here that I want everyone to understand is the only teams that are going to make things happen are the teams that are focusing on the right thing. There are companies that are focusing on the problem, but remember I told you where focus goes, energy goes. Where energy goes, you get results. If you focus on the problem, you focus on why there's no jobs, you focus on why customers are not buying, then you're going to see more of that. So I want us this morning, to focus on something here. Can you guys see that? Hello? Yes, yes we can see. Focus on okay. thriving. Focus, focus on, on what? Thriving. On thriving. Focus on, on thriving. Absolutely. Let us focus on not how we're going to use this particular situation to thrive, to take advantage. Because some people, when, when, when the problem happens, they go inside and they begin to focus on what has gone wrong. But we know, and the reason that we're going to still be the best is because we are, we focus on what happens, on, on what needs to happen. We focus on thriving rather than the problem. So this morning, again, I want to ask you, you know, my sessions are not just about coming and giving you information. I want to ask you a simple question. When we talk about thriving, where does the thriving start? Where does the focus start? Are we going to focus on the customer? Are we going to focus on ourselves? Are we going to focus on, on uh, the board? Are we going to focus on the job? Where is our focus going to be? To focus on ourselves. On our customers. I need some more answers. Where should the focus go first? Should it be on ourselves? Should it be on the customer? Should it be on, on, on the bank? Should it be on the job? Or what is it? Where should our focus go? On us. We first focus on ourselves, then we focus. To Those are the options. On the team, on yourself, on your customer, or on the job. Where does the focus go first? On the job. Okay, on the job. Who else? Who else has got an opinion? Uh, can I say something? Um, yes, I think the first focus should be on the customer because the customer is king. So regardless of okay. your problem, you have to serve your customers first. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, to remind you and to bring it to your attention that the most important person at the bank, I told you from day one, is who? Because if we say that we're going to focus solely on the customer, but we are unhappy, we are stressed, we are sick, we don't have the health, are we going to be able to serve the customer well? No. So no, my, 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 my desire in this session is to start a conversation to say, come on, guys, we need to go back and say, okay, how are we doing on the inside? Because unless we are looking after ourselves first, then else is not going to work. You can't focus on the customer if you don't have food at home because you'll come in and you'll be hungry. 
You can't focus on the customer if you know the landlord is locking you up. So first things first, to all the regional managers, to all the branch managers, I want you to take the focus back on the person on the inside. I want you to start taking time to ask yourselves, how are we doing? How are you? Are you supporting each other? Are you looking after each other? Are you making sure that the team spirit and the well-being of the team is number uno? When we get that right, then everything else will fall in place. Why? When the team is okay, everything else works. When the inside is okay, everything else is going to work. After we focus on ourselves and we know that people are okay, the bank is okay with you, then we can go and say, how well are we treating our customers? Then we can begin to, to start doing some amazing things. So first things first, focus on yourselves first. And then we can go to the next level. The next thing I wanted to share with you because of time is this factor of embrace the new normal. You see that? Embrace, embrace, embrace. What does that mean? Let's embrace. Begin. What does the word embrace the new normal mean? When I say embrace the new normal, what do you guys understand from it? By the way, I like my pink cheats. They remind me of my mom. Tell me, what does the word embrace mean? Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, to me, I think embrace the new normal. We have to appreciate uh, the situation we are in and we accept that we must work in that very situation. Thereafter, appreciating that automatically, we shall have to work in the new norm. We, have, we shall have embraced the new norm. Thank you. Martin, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And you put it perfectly, all right? The whole purpose of embracing the new normal is there's so many people out there saying, oh, we are waiting for COVID to end. We are waiting for COVID. COVID ain't going to end. COVID is going to be part of us. The point right now is to say, okay, if this is the new normal, how are we going to show up? What are we going to do differently? How are we going to show that we are the organization that, you know, and that is for both your own personal life and the life of, uh, of the organization. How are you going to show up? It is the new normal. It is not going to change. When I say embrace it, I mean, stop thinking things are going to get better. No, things are only going to get better if you make them better. Hello. Is everybody still there? We are on coach. We are okay. on coach. And when I talk about embracing the new normal, I want you to look at it from both your personal point of view and the bank's point of view. Even you as yourself, look at yourself and say, hey, things have changed, all right? I'm gonna have to show up differently. I'm gonna have to do things differently. I'm gonna have to embrace taking risks. I'm gonna have to embrace the fact that, uh, you know, business is not the usual way of, of doing things anymore. Therefore, what am I going to do different? That one-on-one -on -one conversation with yourself is where it starts. Then you bring it to the workplace and you say, you know what? The new normal is not the no, it's, there's nothing like the new normal. This is the way things are going to be going forward, all right? So that is point number two. And then number three, we had started off well. In fact, I was pausing and telling everybody that, uh, you know, bank is going to kill it this year, all right? And then COVID came along. I still believe you're going to do it because with the amount of work you had done when we started, I think you guys were flying like crazy, all right? And uh, I think that regardless of what happens, if you continue the same way, it will be okay. So I want you to consider this. Leverage the hug. And this is where I want to go back to all of you, uh, the, the hug champions and the leadership team and everybody and say, come on. We had started something, you guys were on fire. Let us get back into the saddle and do what we have to do. Leverage the hug because it gives you everything you need to know about the customer. Let me tell you a quick story right now. Some of the banks might not survive the next two years because they don't have the hug, because they have not embraced what is happening. They're still thinking like old ways of doing things. They are still thinking like, hey, you know what? It is only going to go to the next level and only the people who are ready and are leveraging their internal strengths, they're leveraging what it takes to be the most relevant to the customer, they're the people who are going to survive. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys can see, to thrive is to go deeper with your customers. To thrive is to say, how are we going to get our customers to survive? Not just survive, but to also thrive. 
How are you going to support them? How are you going to go from selling them a product to selling them a strategy for how they can continue to be successful? That is the new way of thinking because if your, all our customers become successful, that means they'll be able to pay us back and that means we shall be in business better than anybody else. Now, the confidence that I have is that I know what you guys are capable of. My only worry is the mindset has got to go back to that position of it is possible. And I know it is possible because you've done it before. Guys, are we together so far? Yes, we are together. Yes, I'm following. Coach. Yes, coach, we are. Okay. So now that I've given you a little bit of that, I'm just going to share with you very quickly here. I don't know how much time I have, uh, but I'm going to share with you the power of focus. Remember I said to you, the companies that are going to thrive, the companies that are going to make it, they're changing their focus and focusing on what is going to get them to the other side. What is going to make them be uh, the kind of sit in a situation where they are much more relevant to their customers. Now, remember that I work with companies across the spectrum, not just banking. And all the ones that are really making things happen have actually realized that the focus has got to go everywhere else and go somewhere where they can leverage the success of their customers. Okay. So quickly, number one, focus on creativity. And I think uh, Pasi said something before. But I also remember I, I, had, I had you speak about uh, your, your ability, uh, our ability to create and do something. Focus on creating new ways of dealing with our customers. Focus on new ways of helping. Focus on new ways of optimizing operations. Focus on new ways of, by the way, if you're not innovating, I mean, I know you're innovating. If you are innovating at 90% last year, you need to start innovating at 190% this year in terms of technology of getting the service to the customer faster, better than anybody else. Let me repeat myself. If you are innovating at 90% last year, right now you need to be innovating at 190% Pasi, if we are going to be at the forefront. That is what it's going to take. That is why the next focus is this. Focus on who you are now. Forget who you were. It doesn't matter what we were doing six months ago. It doesn't matter who, where we come from. Our past is irrelevant. What matters right now is who are we now? What do we need to do now? What are our strengths and how are we going to build on them? Okay. The, the, the people who really thrive in such environments are the people who ask the most important question. It is not who we were. It is not who we are. It is who are we becoming? What kind of institution are we going to become? What kind of situation are we going to get ourselves into? What new normal are we going to create? By the way, we're having these conversations and all the other guys are having these conversations, but nobody is having the depth of, of conversation like you guys because there's a lot of work that you did six months prior to this situation. Therefore, focus on who you are now. It doesn't matter. What we did at the beginning of the year is totally irrelevant. What is important is who we are now and who we're becoming. Even you in your life right now, if you were a teller six months ago, right now ask yourself, what are you becoming? Because you know, probably the teller system might not be there in six months time. So the question is not who you are right now, but who are you becoming? If you're a leader, person, you're in the director of communications, who are you becoming in terms of going to the next level? By the way, I like to pick on you because you, you, have, uh, you can take it. You're also the only man who has got a bigger head than me, so I know you can handle this situation. So forget who you are, focus on who you're becoming and what is in front of us right now, okay? Next, focus on others and not on yourself. Let me tell you why this is important. Every time you focus on you, on you, on you, you don't have the leverage, the ability to be able to find a solution for your customers. Focus on others, focus on your team, focus on your customer, focus on finding a way to say, hey, how can I help this group of people, especially our credit team and the guys out there? By the way, focus on others. It is much more about progress than difficulties. What is important is, are we progressing? Not what the difficulty is. Are we progressing? Are we doing things differently? 
those of you who are department heads, those of you who are in charge of, of branches, every day from now on, one question as you lock that place is, did we progress? Because if you're still the same every day when you leave, then we have a problem. The question or the challenge or the focus is, are we progressing? That means, um, again, I was talking to, I think it was Joseph the other day, and he was telling me the people that we never used to see as clients is uh, now they're our clients. Why? They haven't been affected. Who are those? Those are the guys in agriculture. Now, everybody's going to go to agriculture. If we're going to go to agriculture, what are we going to position ourselves as? Next. Passy, Rachel, Maggie, Martha, Resto. Do you guys see that? I need some feedback here. Otherwise, I feel like- Yes, we do, Coach. Yes, Coach. What does it say? Yes, we do. What's available? Rather than focusing on what's What's missing? Thank you. Things have changed. A lot of stuff is going to go missing. We're not going to have all the businesses that we heard. Rather than focus, remember where focus goes, energy goes. Where energy goes, you get results. If we focus on what is missing, then we are going to get more of what, what is missing. If we focus on what is available, then it changes the paradigm for us. So in your branches, in your teams, whatever you're doing, ask yourselves a new question. Not what is missing, but guys, what is available? If all the businesses in Tungamo are doing agriculture, we go get all the freaking businesses. Okay, the Kumi guys, you guys were on fire. You need to go now on, on, a, on a, a burning, I don't care what it is. Why? Because when you focus on what is available and you focus on the hub and you focus on how we have created momentum, we will soon be back where we belong because the foundation for us is already there. Next, and this is the most important part. Rather than focus on your products, I want you to focus on what, ladies and gentlemen? We need to focus on value creation, the service. Value creation and your relationships. Your products right now do not matter. I am sorry to tell you, I don't care how many products you have right now, but if somebody is struggling financially, they don't want to know about your products. They want the relationship management. Coach, your going... camera is off. I'm not getting you. My what? The camera, I'm not seeing. No, we are all good. You're the only one who's not seeing me, Mugawi Josh. Guys, our relationships. If you ask me right now, the most important department at the bank is the relationship management department. Because those relationships are going to be crucial for us. When I say you got to go deeper in the relationship management, you better believe it. You are going to have to manage those relationships like nobody else. Because remember that now everybody's going to be scrambling for the little that is there, scrambling for the little business that is there. What is going to make a difference for you is going to be when they go to that customer, that customer says, hey, you know what? Those guys from Finance Trust were here. I'm sorry I can't speak with you because I cannot let down that relationship. They have been there for me. They understand me. They care about me. They are going the extra, uh, extra mile for me. Most importantly, they are loyal. And yes, I heard what MD said earlier. Yes, we got to have, give them the periods, but everybody's giving them a, a grace period. Everybody's giving them uh, you know, uh, a time of a cooling period off. But remember the things we discussed when we were doing the sessions. Those things are more important now. And, and we're lucky that we discuss that stuff. Because now the ability to go back to them, to go and speak with them, to go and give them the connections. You remember what we spoke about? How are we going to harness the customer's potential? Now it is more crucial than anything else, ladies and gentlemen. Value creation and your relationships. 
I don't care about your product. I care. Do you care about me? Remember, people don't give a damn how much you know until they know how much you care. I said that over and over again. I will say it again. Number two, if you're not giving me value, do not come. If you're not giving me something else, don't come and sell me another loan without helping the first loan to leverage it. Don't come tell me, oh, by the way, we are, we are cutting down on our, on our, somebody came here and was telling me they're cutting down on their interest. Oh, we can give you a better interest. Uh, they don't know if the first one I got is working or not. So the way we think as leaders, the way we think as salespeople has got to be in terms of value creation. And then ultimately, opportunities vis-a-vis -vis losses. Yes, we will struggle a little bit. Yes, we're going to lose a little bit. But that is not as important as the opportunity. Because right now, especially the guys in Tungamo, you remember, no, the guys in Barrera, I said to you, your ability to get to the farmers is going to be crucial. That is what I meant. The opportunity right now is how well can you get to those guys? I also told you guys that if you cannot sign on a person when they're in their farm, in the village, deep in the village, and you can't do it there and then, we are losing out big time. I don't know what your budget is for innovation. I don't know what your focus is for innovation. But guess what? You can't afford not to go to the next level. Otherwise, you will be competing with all these other micro, micro guys. But with the brains that you guys have, with the kind of, uh, of, of, uh, of thinking and, and the kind of team you have, I am certain we can take advantage of this situation right now. Because I know some of your rivals are actually able to go with their gadgets or whatever and do it in the field. I need Joseph to drive to Masindi and be able to close the deal there because of our systems. Rather than the losses, let us focus on the opportunities. And then finally, in my little time that I have here with you, I want to say that now is the time where we're going to need all those guys who won, uh, uh, who won, um, I know there's some people who won some, some awards last year doing great stuff. Show up in is what's with the leaders. That starts with the leadership team, Anne, Percy, Sarah, Annette, all of you guys. Now is the time to be the heroes for your organization. Now is the time for you guys to lead at the front via exemplary stuff by doing things that other people do not consider normal. Other people do not consider it's possible. And I'll tell you why I say that. All the banks put out their, their, their financials, all right? Uh, not so long ago, maybe two, three months ago. The banking industry had an amazing year last year across, all right? Now, yes, we did well as Finance Trust Bank, but according to the industry, everybody did well, but nobody did excellent. Two different things. Everyone did well, but nobody did amazing. Why? Because they didn't have as many what? So my challenge for you is in this COVID era, what are you as the leadership, what are you as the team going to do to do beyond what is expected? By the way, many people expect that you know, banks are going to struggle. Many people expect that you're going to fire people. Many people expect that business is going to go down. Is that your expectation? Is that the mindset you have right now? Because remember, where focus goes, energy goes. Where energy goes, you get results. If you're focusing on, we're going to go down. We're going to lose some money. We're going to lose some people. What are you making it up? You're making those things bigger. Therefore, you get, get results from there. I want some real heroes. I want you guys to come up with some things that are amazing. Why you are capable. Why the, you have shown in the past that you can do some amazing things. And what prevents you from doing that right now? What do you need to do when you go back to the team to sit down and say, you know what? We can do this. We can turn this around. We are not going to fire people. We're going to sit with them. We might cut down on the salary or whatever, but we're still going to go to the market and dominate.
Okay, I was reading on some companies, there are certain companies, Amazon, FedEx, and Hilton are sharing stuff. So people who had no jobs to do in the hotels are now working in the warehouses. Why? They don't want people to lose jobs. Why? They're focusing on the future because the future is brighter if you see it that way. It is not who we are as Finance Trust Bank. It is who we are becoming. The question is, that becoming comes from the top in terms of our vision, in terms of what we want, in terms of what we want to create. Now, are we going to look at the figures later on and say, oh, the banking industry suffered, therefore we suffered. Or are we going to say, who gives a damn what happened in the banking industry? We got out. We did what we had to do. That is my little, um, my little message for you guys here today. I want some more heroes because it is heroes in terms like this that make things happen. My question is, are there any heroes on the line today? And if it's okay with you, I would like to stop there. Otherwise, uh, Sarah and uh, Patricia Cameron might come after me. Because I disturb their morning uh, routines and uh, morning activities. Thank you so much. Now is the time for some questions and let us do what we have to do. Pasi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coach Phil. I know uh, we have all been listening in very attentively. We thank you for this um, motivation and also very important insights about how we can focus and where we should put our energy in ensuring that we thrive during this time. At this time, in the interest of time, I want us to really quickly take on some questions. Um, we need to be very organized. You need to unmute yourself and then ask your question and immediately mute. So can we hear some questions to directly to, to, to Phil or our MD? Okay. Questions? 